Free. Hello, Facebook family. Good to see you today. Hope everybody enjoyed their holidays. You had a good time worshiping Jesus and spending some time with your family. Uh, but we're back at Thursday's thoughts today, and I just got something I want to share with you. The story of Gideon, you know, God whittled Gideon's mighty men down. He just had a handful, 300 or so, and uh, they'd been through it. But yet they hadn't been to it. They had been promised victory, but they wasn't at a place of victory yet. And there's a verse of scripture speaking of Gideon here. It says, and Gideon came to Jordan, Judges chapter 8, passed over he and the 300 men that were with him. Now listen to this. Faint, yet pursuing. Faint, yet pursuing. Like I said, they had been through it, but they hadn't yet arrived to it. And they were weary and they were tired, but they were still going after, you know, when I'm sure there's a lot of tired people in the kingdom today. And when you uh, when you get weary, when you get faint, when you feel like I can't make it another day, you know what your options are? None. You can't give up. You have to keep pressing. Uh, listen, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be tired of pursuing and tired of trying and you're fighting your flesh and it looks like a losing battle and you're just worn from the struggle and you're hearing complaints and doubt and you sometimes feel like you're fighting by yourself. You're lonely feeling and you're tired of being ignored and you're trying to do the right thing and the more you try to do the right thing, the, the more it seems to go wrong. And you just feel like I am going to just give up and walk off from this whole mess. I tried. It didn't work. And I'm done with it. Have you ever felt that way? Of course you have. All of us do. Well, I got, I got good news for you. Here's what Paul said to the church at Philippi. He said, I'm confident of this very thing. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Listen, what he just said was he's not going to let you down. The same God that started his work in you is the same God that will continue to work in you until the day of Jesus Christ. We have a guarantee we're not going to fail. We're not going to lose. We should not give up in the middle of weariness. Daniel said this, uh, uh, Daniel chapter 7. Let me read you this in Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 um, um, is speaking of the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist. And, how he uh, comes against the children of God. And, and in Daniel chapter 7, it says this. It says that um, in verse 25, Daniel chapter 7, in verse 25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, shall wear them out. That's, that's what happens when you're like Gideon and you're weary but yet you're pursuing and you know you can't quit but you don't feel like you've got strength to go on and the devil will come along and start to wear you out wear you out wear you out the hebrew there says he'll start to afflict you mentally and consume your thoughts now here's how you know when you're under a major attack and it's time to catch yourself when you're you're he's afflicting you mentally and he consumes your thought when all you can think about is the problem. I'll never make it. I'll never be blessed. I'll never get out of this. I'll never get past it. Paul said that we're to take every thought captive because those thoughts can become strongholds. And when the devil starts to wear you out, wear you down, you're so weary, you can't pray, you can't study, you just feel like there's no use in me going on because he has consumed your thoughts. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to stop put on the mind of Christ. You need to say, wait a minute, I'm not thinking the mind. Because when he consumes your thoughts, Jesus said one time in the book of Matthew, said, why take you thought saying? And when he consumes your thought and you begin to talk it, that thing feeds on itself and you are wore out, beat up, weary, and don't know where, where your next step's coming from. Let me tell you what to do. Trust God. He's able to complete what he started. You're not going to lose. You're not going to uh, fail. You're going to be okay. You're going to come through this and every other area that the devil is beating on your own. You will have victory. I want to read you a scripture. I, 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 want, I want to maybe adjust your mind as to how easy it is to trust God or how easy it, it should be to uh, trust God. Listen in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 25. God said, this he said 
Uh, to whom will you liken me? Or who shall I be equal? Who's equal to me, God said. Lift up your eyes on high. And behold, who hath created these things? Who bringeth out their host by number? Who calleth them all by their names, by the greatness of his might? For he that is strong in power, not one felleth. Let me tell you what God just said. He said, hey, when you're weary, stop just a minute and look up at the sky. And tell me who is equal to me. He said, who, who can call all of these stars by their name? I, I went and did a little research on that. There are 400 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Yet 400 billion. And God said, I flung them off the ends of my fingers and I can call them all by their name. I know every one of them, 400 billion stars in our one galaxy. Now listen. There's 400 billion stars in our one galaxy, but there's 128 billion galaxies in our universe. Did, did, did you just get the gist of how big God is? 400 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy, 128 billion galaxies in our universe. How many stars are there in 128 billion galaxies if there's 400 billion in our one and yet god said i created them all i call them all by name i put them all in their cycle i control every bit of it do you know something if god can call every star by the billions by their name if he's aware of where they're at what their function is what's going on with them in the whole 128 billion galaxies then he may be aware of you and he may he may uh, be able to understand what you're going through. He may just be able to, to to deliver you. He may just be able to give you the victory that you're waiting for. Psalmist said, "Did Psalmist David? Here's the attitude that you've got to get." The Psalmist David said in Psalms 27. He said in Psalms 27. He said, "I had fainted." There we go. Gideon was weary. He wears you out. Bible says. He said, "I had fainted." Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's where you got to get. When you're tired, when you're weary, you just got to say, no, you know what? I'm not going to lay down here and give up. I'm not going to die. My God who started this good work in me is able to finish it. And I am not going to let this thing go. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Not when I, not only when I get to heaven, but I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Here we are at the beginning of a new year, 2020. You just need to stand up and tell the devil, I resist you in the name of Jesus. This will be a good year. You're not going to wear me down any longer. You're not going to consume my thoughts any longer i'm going to think about the greatness of god and the goodness of god the next verse says wait on the lord and be of good courage and he'll strengthen your heart i'm just going to wait on you god the word wait means to to get in a secret resting place with god i'm going to get by myself with god and just wait on his strength to come i might be weary now but i'm going to wait on his strength to come i'm going to wait on him to give me the victory jesus said this said come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me tell you what to do right now. If you're weary, if you're faint, but you're still pursuing, and you don't know how much longer you can pursue, just do what the Bible says. Wait on God. Just think about how great God is. Think about his yoke is easy. And say, you know what, Mr. Devil? I resist you in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. And 2020 is my year for strength. 2020 is my year for victory. 2020 is my year for breakthrough. I believe it's going to be a great year. I don't know if I've told you lately, but I believe it's the word of the Lord for us. We are living in the best 10 years, the best decade of our lives. I love you. I look forward to seeing you Sunday. It's going to be tremendous. God bless you.